Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is the passion according to St. Luke. The Reverend Sean Denzer is preaching. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke, the second part. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you have denied me three times that you know me. He said to him, when I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said nothing. He said to them, but now let the one who has a money bag take it, likewise a knapsack. Let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. He said to them, It is enough. They came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. There appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When those who were around him saw that he would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? One of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. He touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour, the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down, Peter sat down among them. And the servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looked closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour still, another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. O Lord, have mercy on us. Enough. Probably be a better translation. Maybe that's enough, guys. 
Jesus is frustrated because his disciples are absolutely clueless. They're brash. They're self-confident by the end of the night. The best of them, it would seem, is with them, with the others. Has it all been a failure? Three years of being a teacher for them? It's kind of always been the church's assertion that this thought is pressing in on Jesus in the garden, that he is experiencing a reprise of that contest in the wilderness with Satan. I don't really see it here in the scriptures, but I certainly could understand how that would be the thought. I would understand that thought a lot better than what our Lord does. Here the disciples are sleeping as Jesus is shedding his first drops of blood, or nearly so. Why in the world would he go on to die for them? Shouldn't he come down from the cross? Shouldn't he wait and let everybody else bow down to him instead? But these are devilish words. And they are not the words that Jesus says at all tonight. See the beautiful words that he says to Peter before any of it happens. I have prayed for you. You do not expect your God to be talking about praying on behalf of his people. But this is the Lord we have. I have prayed to my Father for you. That your faith would not fail that you would not abandon this, that you would not lose all hope and be lost forever. And what is the content of Jesus' prayer? He goes to the place. He prays it again. His prayer to this effect, though, is the conversation with his Father. The conversation about the Father's will. Yes, the very same prayer that he taught us to pray, Thy will be done. And tonight he mentions the cup. The cup of wrath spoken about in Psalm 74. The wrath which the wicked will be given to drink down to the dregs. And there will be no reprieve. That's who Jesus must become by the Father's will. He must drink down the punishment that is not native or natural or coming to him at all, but to do it for the clueless ones, to do it to save them, so that their faith would have something to grab hold of that is stronger than they are, faith that will not fail then because of him. And so we see this great episode the great contrast continuing as Jesus is forsaken, as he is attacked, and as Peter is with the enemies, warming himself. But then we see that the Lord's glance, that his words are called to mind, and that there is repentance. We see that he is patient with his clueless disciples. We see that he is unswayed and he is glad to conform his will to his Father's expectations so that he may save us, so that he may go on to shed his blood fully for us, so that he may win forgiveness for Peter and for us. Just as we sang and prayed, According to the steadfast love and mercy, remember us, O Lord. It does no good to say, I'll stand for you, Lord, when you're all alone. I'll stand for you, Lord, when there is no threat. I'll stand for you, and I'll never abandon you when there you are with him. Peter learned that lesson bitterly. That when the time came for a confession, he could only give a denial. Lord, have mercy on us that this is not us. 
Remember not the sins of our youth, O Lord, or our many transgressions, but according to this faith of your prayer, according to this work, this drinking of the cup that you have done for us in our place, remember us, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. And so preserve our faith and strengthen us also that we in turn may strengthen our brothers as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.